Congratulations, Utopians. Hope all is well in your world. Recouping from uh, recovering from all the uh, basketball action yesterday, WNBA preseason debut, Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, and Camilla Cordosa, most notably. And then uh, also the elimination of the Los Angeles Clippers. Um, I want to talk about uh, these teams that have been eliminated uh, this morning as I prep for the uh, Denver Nuggets, Minnesota Timberwolves uh, game one showdown this afternoon. Uh, first and foremost, the Clippers and the Bucks, two teams that have gone now uh, back to back days, have been eliminated and relieved in of their sorrows, so to speak, suffer from the same fate. Veteran ball clubs who on paper are very talented until you actually have to play the games. And then you go against teams that are very young, athletic, and hungry, and it makes for a recipe for disaster. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why they say you still got to play the games. And uh, there's been some teams in this playoff who've been eliminated due to injuries, i.e. Miami without Jimmy Butler. I think that series met the fate that it was supposed to. But if had he been healthy, his physicality, his leadership, his spirit on the court would have definitely cultivated the, the heat to make it a more interesting series. It took a miracle three-point performance for them to even get to not get swept. Uh, Zion, same thing with the Pelicans, uh, would have been a totally different series. I hate I hate injuries, man. Giannis with Milwaukee, I don't think Spicy P would have gone as crazy as he would have. Um, him talking tough is funny just because, just Pat Bev, because it's like, well, you know damn well you wouldn't have been feasting like that in Giannis' face. So uh, it is what it is. But the Clippers losing yesterday was kind of crazy to watch. First of all, you have to go back to 2017 when Kyrie was a Cleveland Cavalier and they had hit their ceiling, so to speak, against that loaded Golden State Warriors team, that dream team of a Golden State Warrior roster. And Kyrie was on the menu. Uh, what ended their connection, LeBron, and it's funny because you keep hearing LA fans, Trey Young, Kyrie, none of those guys are the resolution. First and foremost, Kyrie and LeBron, I'm glad to see them getting along. But... LeBron had a conversation in 2017 in the summer with Paul George about joining forces. Well, naturally, you have to give up something to get something. And what the Cavs were going to have to give up was Kyrie for Paul George, but the Pacers did not feel like that was adequate enough compensation. And Paul and Kevin Love was on an undesirable contract. Kyrie caught wind of this, and that was the end of their partnership. He made it be known, I'm not signing with Indiana, I'm not re-signing with them, and they don't anyway think that he's worth Paul George, which rightfully so, at that time he was not worth what Paul George was in 2017, 2016, 2018, period. It's not even comparable, not even close. Kyrie found the perfect teammate, but they're not, Paul George and Kyrie did not breathe the same air at that time. But this series was different. And the fact that Kyrie is more wiser, but he still plays the same brand of basketball. Meanwhile, it's already remarkable that PG-13 is returned from that catastrophic, horrid leg injury. But his game was still predicated on his explosiveness to an extent, to a degree, being 6'10". And he's obviously lost a little bit of a step going into a contract year. And so you look at Kyrie... And to see him eliminate him when him and LeBron, when LeBron and LeBron and Paul George are both in LA, just on two different LA teams, and he's the last one standing, what a full circle moment! And I don't think the NBA discussed it enough. I know they have a vested interest in marketing LeBron a certain way, but it was a hell of a storyline. Uh, ultimately, the Mavericks were a more complete design team. Uh, they played who they were supposed to play. Obviously, Kyrie and Jason Kidd's connection dating back to New Jersey when he was a kid and Kyrie was born in Jersey. He was a kid watching Jason Kidd run it up and being the, the East Coast LeBron with the, jet, with, the, with, the, with the Nets. He was basically LeBron back then when he was in New, York, in New Jersey, back-to-back -back finals appearance. He was the only point guard I witnessed in that area doing the triple-double thing like Russ and LeBron and a lot of these guys do these days. It was very taboo. It was very rare to see someone get triple-doubles, and, and Jason Kidd was doing it regularly. 
And so now, full circle moment, they even have the same birthday coaching each other, coaching him. It's a phenomenal full circle moment. Dallas just has all the synergy right now. And like I projected, they were going to knock somebody out. Clippers, make no mistake about it, they were a heavyweight contender. Do I think they're going to do anything in the second round? No, they're likely getting eliminated. Uh, but that doesn't take away from this being a step in the right direction, improvement. The chemistry, the culture in Dallas looks very healthy. Kudos to those guys. It was a great job. The Clippers, I don't know what they're going to do. To me, I think they should swap out Paul George for Jimmy Butler. Paul George has always wanted to be a Miami guy. I think Jimmy Butler's antics have worn thin. I always wanted to see Kawhi and Jimmy Butler as teammates. That's who I would have preferred Kawhi would have got. They need a vocal leader. Kawhi has now had his time to show that it was his team, but they need some vocal leadership. They need someone there who's going to hold people accountable. He has the perfect kind of persona for Tinseltown. And with them going into a new stadium, you need somebody who can really galvanize a community, really put the world on his back. He's the perfect kind of personality. He's a little bit too loud for Miami. They want a nobody bigger than the program type environment, similar to what Bill Belichick ran with New England. But I think a swap would be best for both sides, seeing how both guys are in their contract years. Uh, that would make it very interesting. I'm sure that Harden and, and Butler will have to crease some things out, but at the end of the day, he would be better. He would be great for the overall good of the Clippers. Um, Coach Ham getting terminated. Uh, the Lakers, same thing. Top two best players, very talented on paper. Supporting cast, not so much. It's a theme. You see what I mean? These veteran teams who, yes, your guys are still top. Same thing with Phoenix, still top above everyone else but you know it's a matchup look Dinwiddie was doing great on Jamal Murray you know uh, Keon Ellis put Steph Curry out of his misery you know Jaden McDaniels on Booker Devin Booker guys just sometimes have your number out there and so you you know it's that that's just the way it, it unfolds sometimes but ultimately, at the end of the day, you still have to play these games, and we got to witness that's the beauty of the playoffs, the risers, the sinkers, the, pe the, the, the matchups that change, dynamics, some no-name clamping your world's favorite, most sponsored athletes. It's part of the, it's, it's part of the you know, it's part of the dance. So uh, this is going to be interesting. There's a common theme. There's some teams that are really old, and they need to incorporate some young players in order to keep things better you know you look at cleveland they played a kogi the other night against orlando and it was a they put up a much better fight his activity his energy level you got to incorporate and have a healthy blend it can't be all vets it can't be all young even though we see nick batum patty mills make key contributions this postseason hell even danilo gallinari uh it seemed like there was a lot of class of 08 reunions in this draft it's still ultimately at the end of the day, you have to incorporate some quality young guys. That's why a record number second round picks were being moved in this year's trade deadline because there's going to be an added need, not to mention with the salary cap being crunched. All right, Utopians, I'll try to do better next time. Global, out.